good thing to know that you know the Lord. Amen. We're glad to have you with us this morning. I hope you've had a blessed week. This is the day that the Lord has made. And all we need to do is just rejoice. Amen. Why can you rejoice? Because of everything. God's got everything in His hands. Amen. And Romans 8, 28 says, Everything works to the good of the Lord of the Lord and are called according to His purpose. So I can rejoice today because he's got it laid out. He's yeah, got it worked right. out. He'll take care of it. Amen. And I love the Lord. I, I want to thank you for being so good to us. This morning we got some birthday. Paul, you come on up. Yeah, bless your heart. You don't know Amen. Doug and Kendra, you come on up. Y'all got an anniversary? Anybody else had a birthday or anniversary? We'll sing to them. Amen. Anybody? <coughs> if not, we'll stand to our feet. We'll sing happy birthday first and then happy the anniversary. <laughs>
we've got an unspoken request this morning. They've been known to raise their hand. They're all over the house. We're going to ask Brother Wayne, Brother Tony, to come around and take up our morning call. <laughs>
Say amen. 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 Hey, I, I love the Lord. And I didn't know they were going to sing that song right there at the end. I had called Shane over and I said, Shane, we've got that song on CD. And I said, I still would love to hear it this morning. And you know what? God knows exactly what we need. Amen. Hey, this morning, I want to say something before we get started. Don't let the devil get the best of you this morning. Amen. Amen. Now, there's some of you that don't believe that there's a devil, but there's a devil that's a controlling spirit. He's here to steal, to kill, and to destroy. That's right. He's out to rob you of your victory. He's out to rob you of your joy. He's out to take your peace away from you. Amen. Amen. But just as that song said, we have a God yeah. that's big enough to handle any problem. Now, I'm going to tell you, I, I'm not a mind reader, fortune teller, or a soothsayer, but there's folks right here this morning that are wrestling with the devil over some minor issues, over some minor things, just some little bitty things. Yeah. And if you don't be careful, the devil's going to rob you this morning of a blessing that God wants you to have. But amen. So what you need to do this morning is just say, okay, God, no matter what, I'm just going to turn it over to you and God, you take care of it. But I know that you know what's best. Amen. Say amen. 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 Let the devil know there's no room for him in this place. Say amen. That's the reason we've got two doors on that side, two doors on that side. We'll make one in the back. Amen. This is the house of the Lord and we're going to worship Him and we're going to praise Him and thank Him for being who He is. Amen. 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 All right now, we're getting down to the nitty gritty. All right. Hey, all the kids five and under that want to go to the nursery can go with Miss Amanda and them. There they go right there. We appreciate our young ladies that take care of the nursery for us. Amen. Appreciate them. Boy, well, thank God for these young ones. Look for them. Hey, if you don't think that's a job, some of you men ought to sign up for that one, son. Hey, Amen. Ashley, you stand up. Hey, Amen. This is Ashley. Ashley's going to be, she, after the day, she's going to be heading up our nursery. All the people that are want to take a clap. Hey, Amen. Uh, she's going, she's come to me looking for something to do. Amen. From now on, every Sunday, she's going to be in charge of finding somebody to go to our nursery and somebody to go. And I'm going to get things out in the open this morning. Okay, they ain't going to be no under the rug stuff. The kids are the people that take care of our nursery. Amen. They get $30 a Sunday to split between them. Now, I got news for you. I got my $15 just to get to stay right in here. Amen. Amen. Yeah. See, I got folks that tell me I ought not do that. I'm tired of folks telling me what I ought to do and what I ought not do. Hey, man. Hey, these kids leave our church service. They go back there and they don't get to watch. They have to go. They deal with our kids so that we can enjoy the service. Somebody ought to give them a hand. Hey, man. And all these folks that want to swallow a camel and strangle a net, hey, man, we'll talk after church, okay? I love you this morning. Don't let the devil get the best of you. Amen. Amen. I've been, we've been doing this for quite a while, Brother Grady. Amen. And it just seems like people think that we're trying to do something behind their back. We're not. Amen. But this is something that helps our young folks, that helps our young kids. And it's for anybody that wants to participate. Now i got a question. Somebody said, Preacher, I don't want the money. That's all right. You see, Brother Larry, he'll take every dime of it. <laughs> Amen. We got we got we got that taken care of. If there's somebody that wants to do it, that does, and that's a blessing. Amen. I've had folks to do that. See, Brother Larry, he'll put it in our offering and it'll be used for the Lord's house. Amen. Say amen. 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 We're not defeated this morning. Amen. Hey, how many of y'all got a red bracelet? Amen. If you ain't got one, see Miss Tamara, we got some more. But on them it says overcome. Yes. Amen. That's the reason that these young folks chose it because they knew there were going to be some obstacles as our church grew, as our church began to fill in. And as I, I want you to look at a beautiful parking lot. They in the space out there. I say, amen. 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 There's going to be some obstacles that get out of the way. There's going to be some things that you ain't used to, but you ought to get you one of these bracelets. Amen. Oh, yeah. And say, I ain't going to be a quitter, but I'm going to be an overcomer. I'm going to get through those things that I can't understand. I'm going to do the things that God wants me to. I'm here this morning, not preaching defeat, not preaching confusion, but preaching that God is still in control. Amen. 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 I love the Lord. Amen. Somebody said,
said, how come you always look to the left? That's where Petey sits. Amen. <laughs> Amen. I look to the left. Amen. Because there's a, there's a thing. But she got in the car one time and she said, but well, folks in church think you're always preaching to me. <laughs> and I said, I am. <laughs> Amen. But what it does is when you look at other folks, they, somebody say, well, I seen who the preacher was looking at. And if I look at Miss Kendra, they somebody going to say, well, boy, Miss Kendra did it this morning. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So I'm being honest. If I look at Brother Jason, they're going to say, I wonder what Jason done last week. The preacher was all over it. Amen. <laughs> so I try to focus my attention most of the time to someone that, that and listen to me, and she does me like she does at home, it just goes over her head anyhow. So, amen. I love the Lord. I appreciate her. I don't want her to know it. But smile with me this morning. I feel a, a, a reason to smile, to open the door, to open the window, and let the sun shine in. Amen. Hey, I feel a reason to smile. Amen. I feel a reason to look up to my Redeemer's draw it nigh. Amen. My help has come. Amen. I love the Lord. I, I, we've got some, a lot of visitors. We're glad to have you. Amen. But we worship the Lord around here. We get kind of peculiar, but uh, we worship the Lord. Amen. So I, I love you this morning. I put the full fit back. Amen. All right. Now if you will pray for us just for a little while. I've been told about 30 minutes worth is all we need. Amen. And I'll try my best to fulfill that request. Amen. Amen. And the person that told me that, he don't bother me at the least. Amen. <laughs> and he knows it. Amen. <laughs> Amen. You pray for us this morning. We've got two passages of Scripture, and we'll get right into it, Elijah. Well, I want to talk to you in 2 Kings chapter number 4. And if you will, turn your Bible with me to Luke chapter number 15. Amen. We're going to be dealing with some issues this morning. Amen. That has to do with who God is. Amen. We've already sung this morning, and it's already been said that God is enough. Amen. There's no true words. Amen. God is enough for everything. There's nothing that God can't do. I was listening to a little young preacher. He was on the radio yesterday morning, and he preached the message that there's nothing too hard for God. I began to think about that message, and I began to ponder it in my heart. There's no reason I can't smile, because I've got a God that can handle everything I face. Amen. I've got a God that can handle all my problems, and I'm an overcomer, not because of who my earthly daddy was, but because of who my heavenly father is. That's what makes me an overcomer. Amen. I love you today, and amen, you pray for us. Ask you to stand with us, amen, for the reading of the word. Won't read, I'll tell you what, for the sake of time, we'll read one verse in 2 Kings chapter number 4, amen, and then we'll go to Luke chapter number 15. In 2 Kings 4, we'll read the second verse. And Elisha said unto her, What shall I do for thee? Tell me, what hast thou in the house? And he said, Thine handmaid hath not anything in the house save a pot of oil. Amen. Now, let's look in chapter 15 of the book of Luke. I want to read about three verses there, starting with the eighth verse. And it says, Either what woman having ten pieces of silver, if she lose one piece, doeth light a candle, and sweep the house, and seek diligently till she find it. And when she had found it, she called her friends and her neighbors together, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the peace which I had lost. Likewise, I say unto you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner that repenteth. Amen. We want to go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, as we come to you just one more time, we thank you for these good folks that have met with us today. More than that, we thank we thank you for your presence in our house. And God, we thank you for just being a part of our service. God, we pray, and I know that there's no preaching in me, but we know that, God, that if we can get in touch with you, that, God, that you are a God that can use our lips and use our heart and use our mind to bring a word this morning that will cause folks to leave the house of God encouraged, uplifted, ready to do a, live another day. God, I pray.
only visit with us just a little while. God, touch the hearts of those that are down in the house. Touch the hearts of those that are lost. Bring them to an altar, God. God, I pray for those that have walked away from you that this would be the morning that they find what they have lost. I love you now, and I ask you to go with us, lead God, and direct us. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. And you can be seated. Now, if you will, for a little while, we'd rather be of two women. One of them being a parable in the Luke chapter number 15. I want to talk to you just a little while. Listen to me. Both of these women in these stories, amen, have had a great loss, amen. And then listen to me. In 2 Kings chapter number 4, Brother Larry, I want to tell you something, amen. There's a little woman there that her chief, the Bible says that she has lost her husband. Now listen to me, in the Old Testament, a husband was more than a companion. He was a provider, amen. He was a leader. Somebody get a hold to this, amen. He was someone that she depended on. He was the one there when things went bad that she went to. He was the one that when Miss Diane, that when all hell was breaking loose at her house, she would go to him and say, what should I do, amen. Hey, listen to me today. Hey, I want to let you know she has had a great law. Amen. And she is in a place of don't know what to do next. Amen. And the man of God come to her house. Amen. And she knowing that he's a man of God knows that she can go to him and he looks at her and says, tell me, amen, what I can do for you. Amen. And all of a sudden, Elisha has asked her question. What's wrong with you? Why aren't you smiling anymore? Why? Why don't you have the presence of God in your life? Why ain't you happy? There's some of us here today that don't smile hardly ever. Amen. It seems like the world is upon your shoulders and it seems like it's weighing you down. But I mean in the New Testament, it said, let us lay aside every way that so easily besets us. And it tells me for us to run. I come this morning not to have a funeral, but I come to have a celebration of the past when I thought all hope was gone. Listen to me. I gotta get into this, and if I don't, I'll mess up and jump my, my 
a little note saying, uh, he asked her, he said, what's in your house? Now, when you look up this word house and you get into it, it means a place of residence. Amen? A place that where she lived. And when, I'm going to tell you something. The house that we want to focus on this morning is not the earthly house that you'll go back to in a few minutes. But I want to know what you've got in your spiritual house. Amen? The house that God lives in. I live at 380 North Cross Main Road, uh, Monroe, Georgia. But God lives inside of Frankie Green. Amen? And I'm going to tell you something this morning. Uh, the man of God asked her, said, what have you got at your house? Amen. And she probably, if she'd have been honest with him, she'd have said, I ain't got much. Amen. All I've got is just a little pot of oil. And we'll get to that in just a minute. Because she had more than she ever realized. There was more in that pot of oil. Now, can I help y'all right here what that pot of oil represents? The oil represents the Spirit of God. Can I go another step? The all represents the presence of God was still in that house. Even though all the die had gone. Even though he had died. Even though he left bills to be paid. He had left the God there. He had lived the life that God was welcome in that house. And God was still there. Amen. 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 I'm going to help some of y'all. You can't lose something you ain't never had. Amen. They some of these folks that go around saying you can be saved today and lost tomorrow. That ain't according to the word of God. Don't you believe that? Once you get God, you got him whether you like him or not. That's right. Yes, sir. Amen. There, hey, listen to me, Brother Larry. I, I did it. I loved him. Amen. And you know what? I was agreeing. I was his. It didn't matter what. Amen. I could have changed my name, but I'd still been his son. Amen. Hey, it don't matter. Listen to me. I want to draw you a picture of a little woman in that second, uh, second Kings chapter number four. And how that she looked in her house and all she had was that little pot of oil. And she didn't have no idea the power that that oil would have. She didn't know the, what, what it represented in her life. Amen. But it was all that was left. And let me tell you, Brother Zach, you got to read this. You got to get the meat out of it. Amen. We just got, but too many times we've read this and not got the real meaning out of it. I want to let you know something. God still lived there. That oil let us know that God was still in the house. It didn't die when daddy left. It don't die when mama left. It don't die when granny left. I'm so glad that God still lives in me. I got any people here that are happy that God lives inside of you. How do you know that God lives on the inside of you, preacher? Because the Bible said old things pass away. It said all things become new. All the things that I used to hate, now I love. Well, so you might not have ever pictured yourself sitting on a Sunday morning listening to an old slobbering preacher who preach the Word of God but they some of moved on the inside of you. Well, that changed your life. They give you a job. They give you a direction. They got your steps laid out for you. I'm so glad this morning. I know I'm been saved. Amen. 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 I'm going to help those folks. Amen. That feel like that you once felt the presence of God and now you don't feel it. He ain't gone. You just lost that feeling. Amen. 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 Now listen to me, this little woman. She feels like all she's got. But let's look at this old. And let's look at it and see what it does. Hey, listen to me. God was still there. That oil represented that God was still in the house. Ain't you and me glad that God is still in our lives? Because I couldn't make it without Him. I've done scared a bunch of y'all. I've got a lot of y'all second guessing. What kind of church is this? This is the kind of church that God can still be felt in. This is the kind of church that still believes that God can handle our problems. God can handle our sickness. That God can handle our trouble. That God will look after us. Amen. No matter what we get into. Amen. Amen. I believe that. But you know, you don't get folks that like that no more. Amen. Hey, listen to me. I, I, I want to do Jason helped me this morning. He said that they had come. See, Jason went through a long 
time without a job and God finally gave him a job. And now they're talking about a layoff. But through what he's been through, he said this morning that he realized that God had his situation handled. Amen. Amen. We need to smile this morning. They need to, and I want you to smile. I want you to take all the pressure of an SAT right out the window. Because if God's got plan on you going somewhere, you go it. Amen. You do the best you can. You put the rest in God's hand and you trust it. Oh, I get it.
right now. <laughs> you ever felt like that? Yeah. You ever felt like that? You ever felt like that God has left you holding the bag? Yeah. Amen. But then she's a man of God. She said, what have you got in your house? She said, I got a little pot of oil. She said, I got a pot of oil. Amen. And she said, that's all I got. And the man of God knew what that was. That was a sign that that was the presence of God. That God has never left. He's still right there. Somebody say amen. amen. God is still working in your life. Even though you can't see. Yeah. Let me tell you what this wife did, Scott. If she had a question, she would go to her husband. And she would say, listen to me. Obadiah, what do you think God wants us to do here? And Obadiah, being a man of God, he would lead her. Amen. In the right way. Now she is having to defend for herself. Maybe there's somebody here that's married and for the first time in your life God has put something on you that you are having to fight by yourself that you can't talk to nobody else about. But God is wanting you to know that I'm still with you. I'm right here. That presence of that all lets you know that God is still in your house. Amen. He's letting us know. That house, that word, means that means where God lives. And this is where God lives, on the inside of us. A lot of you think that He lives at 1434 Chronic Town Road. Amen. And can you come to see Him every once in a while? But God don't live there. Can I tell y'all something? God goes home with me when I go. God goes to work with me when I go. God goes to out with me when I go. Amen. Do you know what? God goes with me everywhere I go. Hey, God is like my youngins. If my youngins couldn't go, I never would go. Man, invite me to come eat. He said, you can't bring your youngins. I said, well, I can't come. Amen. Hey, Say we have got God. Hey, Amen. If, if they don't want God, then they don't want me. Hey, Amen. And I know I'm stumbling around. But these folks here that don't realize that they feel like God has just walked out of their life. But he's still in your life. He's still in your house. And he's still working with you. Amen. What has God done? I won't hurt him right here because they did it 30 minutes. <laughs> they, uh, listen to me. Listen to me. God has sent her a man back into it. He has sent her a man. Now, if we had time, we would talk about this town, the man that God has sent into our life. There's a man. See, I couldn't make it on my own. I was one. But God sent a man into my life. God sent His only begotten Son. Amen. Listen to me. And Jesus walked into my life and He asked me, said, what you got in your house? What's wrong with your life? Where is your life going? And the little woman told him, said, listen, man, God said, the creditors are coming. Said, they coming to take my children. They're coming to take them away. They're going to make bond slaves out of them. They're going to take them away from me. And the man of God looked at me and said, wait a minute. Wait a minute, what you got at your house? She said, I got the little old. And I'm here to tell you, you might feel like your life is fixing to fall apart, but I want you to look in the cabinet. I want you to look on the inside of your heart and realize that God is still there. Yes. Yes. Amen. Listen to me. The disciples was on the ship. Jesus had went into the inner part and let us sleep, and the storms came. Amen. There's going to be storms, but God's still going to be there. Amen. Amen. See, I'm just trying to get some of y'all to lift your heart, lift your eyes, and look up. Amen. I'm trying to get to feel that doom and gloom all the time. I want you to know something. There's going to be some hard times, and there's going to be some good times. But I looked in the cabinet. The oil is still there. The presence of God is still real in our life. Amen. Now, I'm going to help y'all right here. Then we'll go on. And that meant with the presence of God there, what does the Bible say? That all things are possible through God. Amen. Amen. He said the things that were possible, that were impossible with man, are possible with God. So you know what that does? Look at smile at me, Larry. That means there's hope for me and you. When men couldn't help us, God could. Amen. Now some of you ought to get up right now and come down here at this altar and just say, God, forgive me for doubting you. Forgive me for thinking that you left me. Forgive me for thinking that you had lost all I left me holding the bag. But God, today I have heard from heaven and I feel the presence of God in my life and I know that you are real and I know that you're going to help me. I just got to be willing to do what you ask me to. Amen. Because where God is, strange things happen. Yes. Strange things happen. 
Y'all ever seen any strange things happen? You ever seen anybody go to the doctor and they tell them they got a deep bad disease or they got cancer and they go back for an ultrasound or they go back for blood work and all of a sudden the doctor looks at them and says, you had it when you come last time. Amen. But I don't know what's happened to it. Anybody here want to say that? There's a presence of God in my life. The reason I'm here today is because there's a God that lives. That reason I can smile. I just wish That's Christians right. would act like Christians. Amen. And get up and let the world know that the presence of God is enough. Amen. 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 All right. Let's hear the presence of God. Let me tell y'all something real quick. The presence of God meant that there was hope for her children. Amen. That means that there was hope that the devil wouldn't give them. That means I hope somebody get a hold to this. Amen. Do you know the reason God, amen, hey listen to me, you give up too quick. Right. Yeah. Amen. Hey amen. Hey, some of you ought to get you two of these bracelets. <laughs> hey amen. One to go on each all. Because the devil's coming at you. And then can I tell you why? Because he knows you'll quit. He knows you're going to sit at home next Sunday. He bothers you next week. You're going to sit at home and say, Amen. He's coming to your house and he knows you can't handle it. He knows you crumble like a cookie. He knows you ain't no overcomer. You don't realize that you've got the presence of God in your life and the devil can't do nothing to you that God don't let him do. Amen. Amen. I hope next Sunday when some of y'all ain't here, y'all hear my voice. Amen. Because some of you get mad saying the preacher's calling me a coward when you ain't putting up no fight. Amen. You ain't doing nothing to put up no opposition. Amen. But there was a presence of God in this house. Let the devil know I've got a God that's bigger than you are. Amen. Amen. Somebody says, well, if I get involved with that God thing, the devil really don't get me. Amen. He's really got you all that. Right. Amen. Hey, it's okay. Everybody ain't going to like me. They ain't going to like my style. I've got a presence of God about me. I woke up this morning and I walked out that door and I felt the sun shine on me. And I felt something run all over me. And you can call it crazy. But God said, I got you, son. I got your back. I got the front of you. I got your left side. I got your right side. You just go over there and be the preacher. Be the pastor that I want you to do. Bring the word. Be instant in season, out of season. Be long suffering, amen. Be willing to walk the road. And I'll bless you. He said there'll be some of them leave. Why would you keep preaching? Because every time one leaves, I'll send you five more, amen. Oh, they ain't about nothing in the world. 
You keep praying, Doug. Amen. You keep praying. You keep praying. Now I'm going to tell you something. Get a hold of this. I don't care what them tests come back like. I don't care what they come back like. I hope they come back so good that we'll run around the church three times. Amen. But if they come back, no matter what the thing, no matter what they say, we're going to keep praying. We're going to keep coming. We're going to keep trusting God. And we're going to hold on that this is not to my end, but this is for my own again. Amen.
There's a chance that he can work. Amen. And then some of you have lost that hope. You feel like God has let you down. And I'm going to tell you something. In Luke, this chapter, ain't you? And this is what this is what God showed me. She lost the criminal. And I, I, I read and I studied it. Palestinian, Palestinian women were given 10 silver coins when they got married. Sentimental. Had a lot of family value. And it was it's compared to the ring that I give you. Amen. When I see that ring on your hand, that makes me know that you realize that you're mine. Huh? Same way you look at me. There it is. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Somebody listen to me now. I'm getting some more. And these, these, these coins, when that husband would come home, they would be displayed. And Glenn, he would look. Yeah. And he would realize that she thought a lot of the gift that he had given her. But now she's lost one. There's no happiness in that home anymore. But listen to what God showed. The Bible says that she lived a camp. She looked and she swept and garnished the house. And she found. But guess what? It was still in the house. Yeah. It was still in the house. It hadn't gone over. She hadn't lost it and been misplaced, amen. Yeah. Amen. She didn't lose it. She misplaced it, amen. You can't lose God sometimes. You can misplace God, amen. But you cannot lose Him, amen. amen. She said, I found it. And she said, once I found it again, she said, I called to my neighbors. She said, I called to my friend. Said, come on over. I found the joy that I used to have. Amen. Amen. Listen, I'll tell you what this is all about. <coughs> See, when she lost that joy, she lost that coin, that husband man that represents God, he couldn't come home because it wasn't right. She didn't want him to see her not having that coin. But once that coin was replaced, she could welcome him at the door, knowing that everything was in order. Amen. This morning, you might not have been able to talk to God. You might have been like Adam when God said, Adam, where art thou? And he said, Lord, I, I sinned. Amen. He said, he said, I hid myself from him. You might be that far away. But what you lost can be found this morning. What you lost. See, I, I, I would have hated to have preached this message and preached to you a message that that little woman never found what she was looking for. Remember, this is a parable. Jesus is using this to tell a story. So it's not only about the coins of the Palestinian woman, but it's about the joy in our lives sometimes. It's about the peace that we used to have. Amen. 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 Listen to me. Is anybody here that's lost that peace? That peace, it passes all understanding. That in Philippians, that Paul told Philippians, says, in your life with God, there's a peace about your life that you know that God has your life. Just like what you said. You can't keep your job. There's nothing you can do about it. Nothing you can say that can make them make you stay. Amen. You just have to trust God that He knows what. And it ain't, it might not be easy, amen. Right. Can I tell you something? I want you to hear this. This is the month of Easter. For some of you, you don't know. Amen. Easter is March the 27th. Amen. A glorious day in our life. But you ain't got to find a wait for Easter for your hope to be resurrected. You ain't got to wait for Easter for your joy to be resurrected. You ain't got to wait for Easter for your peace to be resurrected. Amen. To bring back. Amen. Somebody say, I'm looking for it. Sweep the house. Find where you left it. Hey, some of you that want peace in your family. Hey, I'll be honest. God sent this message this morning because it can still be found. It can still be. See, this parable was to let us know that there will be times that we lose that joy, that peace, that happiness. As long as we got the presence of God in our life, it can still be found. That's right. Amen. Sing that song again. Let's sing it. Amen. I don't know who you are or this helps you at all. But this morning, I want to tell you something. 
number one in the book of Kings, God wants you to realize that He is still here. That the presence of God is still real in your life. Yes, that He has left you. And he is he's still able to supply your needs. Look at me, y'all. Look at me. God is speaking to you this morning. But, and He deserves more. Now listen, I know that I stumble. And I know that my words don't always come out like And I know that I, I say things, words that don't go in the right places sometimes. But God, when He speaks, He says all the right things. Amen. Amen. And this morning, He's speaking to someone. He said, I'm here. I've never left you. I won't leave you. You can still feel my presence. I'm still here. And that parable that Jesus used. Thank you, Lord. It was sent to us to let us know, even if we lose it, sometimes, if we work, we can find it. This morning, I'm so glad that God's going to be here. And the presence of God will still be felt among His people. The land of joy, the mind of peace, and life will still be found. Even in death, this time. Even when we lose the ones that we love.
uh, when we had a couple of events here at the church, they've got moved to the back pew back here on the right hand side. So if you missed anything, get that. They've been back there a few weeks, so if you don't get them this week, we're going to put the colored books in the nursery and the Bibles we're going to put up and hand them out to somebody else. That'll be where they're at. I appreciate that. The long day is conference, and don't forget the special offering at the end of the month for the day. Hey, and can I tell y'all what's the hardest thing for me? I know what these day hunts going to be about, but I can't tell you. <laughs> and I know what's going to happen these Sunday morning, I can't tell you. <laughs> Do you know how bad it is for how big my mouth is and how long it's going to be? The expectation, I am just waiting. I'm like water on the roof. <laughs> okay, you and Scott need to sit together. Okay. <laughs> I love it. No, Zach said I need to know when to turn it off, right? <laughs> I love it. Hey, anybody? Um, we try to go ahead. Those that um, put a date on their calendar, April 16th, we'll be going to DCT Madison. What time do we have to do? Normal time, we'll leave at 12. 12, okay. 12 o'clock. Now, if you've never been to one of CT's uh, meetings, it's a great experience. It is spirit filled. And I'm going to tell you what. This to me. I've been up there, and they give a banner out for churches with the most popular. I want one of them back. <laughs> I want one of them back. You do not have to provide a ride. You don't have to buy your gas. We'll provide you a ride in the I want one of them banners to go back there in the hall. <laughs> so, I don't need 50 folks. On that note, we put a sign-up sheet back there before, and if we had everybody on the last one that had signed up, we would have easily won them out. If everybody that signed up went. Well, I'm telling you, more than the banner, you'll be blessed with a good service. And it's for everybody, not just young folks. Oh, yeah. All right. I know you're ready to go. Anything else before we leave? Stand to your feet. Turn around, shake hands with one another, and consider yourself this man. Are you looking for a place to worship God in spirit and in truth? Hello, I'm Frankie Green, pastor of Trinity Baptist Church in Auburn, Georgia. We would like to invite you to be in our service with us. Sunday school starts at 10 with morning worship at 11. Sunday evening worship begins at 6 and Wednesday night prayer service at 7. We are a King James Bible-believing, fundamental, independent Baptist church reaching out to those who need a special touch from God. For more information, you can visit us at Trinity TrinityBaptistAuburn.com or on Facebook at Trinity Baptist Church Auburn. We welcome you to Trinity Baptist Church where you will become part of a family.